Engineer vs. Designer is brought to you by the Mojo 3D Printer. Now you can have 3D printing right at your desktop at a remarkably low cost. With the magic of Mojo, there's really no limit to your creativity. See it at mojo3dprinting.com. Josh. Hey, Josh. Yes. Hey, Josh. Yes. If engineering had the radiant energy of the sun, you would cook raw eggs in their shells as you walked past them. <laughs> In the supermarket. I have that effect. It's true. Welcome to Engineer vs. Designer. <laughs> podcast. For product designers, engineers, and anyone who wants to share 3D data of their amazing creations over the internet. My name is Josh. And my name is Adam. And um, I gotta say, I really like the idea of sharing a little bit of that 3D action with a whole oh, bunch of peeps online. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, dear awesome. Adam, you are in luck. This mm. week we talk with Nitin Rao. He and the Sunglass.io crew are making it possible Ooh. for you to put over 40 different 3D file formats online. What? 40? No way. Yep, in real time. What? That's yep. not even possible. And share them. For real? Simultaneously oh. with multiple people. I don't believe that. Believe it. Oh, people. Well, <laughs> apparently it's true, folks. They just received $1.7 million in funding. And they were one of the top presentations at this year's TechCrunch Disrupt. Mm -hmm. And they even have new SolidWorks SketchUp Rhino and processing plugins oh available God. right now. And an API that allows you to export your models directly you, you to that? the sunglass.io web interface. Could you could you hear my how fast my heart was beating just then yes. when you said yes. that? Yes, it's my exciting God. stuff. <laughs> I, was, I was seizing up. I've, I've stopped breathing <laughs> right now. It's true, people. I wouldn't lie to you, and Josh might lie to you, but he's not lying to you. In this yep. case. No, not at <laughs> all. I wouldn't lie to them, ever. You might. Speaking of things that are not <laughs> lies, um, we did have a chance to talk to this guy, so let's let's roll that date. Well, we have a very important question to start off uh, the, the interview. I, if you could experience the world in full augmented reality, digital 3D, but in order to do so, you had to replace your head with an 80 CRT <laughs> computer monitor, would you do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are not a true yeah. geek. Yeah. <laughs> oh. At least we know what we're dealing with. Okay, so to catch everybody up, we've been following Sunglass.io for quite a while now, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, for those who haven't been following, what is Sunglass.io in, in you know in thirty seconds, and and how is that going to change the world? Sure. Uh, so Sunglass is uh, an, an, an MIT startup working to democratize access to design. Uh, to begin with, we're a browser-based platform for real-time collaboration. So you can work with, uh, our, our vision is that you can work with you know, any other designer uh, on any product from any device. Uh, and, and working in 3D, in full 3D. In full 3D. So we want to make 3D fast, easy, accessible. Oh, very good. So since we talked to you, gents, last, you've had a lot of development, just tons of it. And you, you, you've received a big round of funding, 1.7 million. Uh, so what's been going on at Sunglass since? Sure. So, so Sunglass is a platform. Um, and, and, and so we've been working to build different, different parts of the platform. So, so there's, the, uh, there's what we call the stage. So a completely browser-based environment for collaboration. You don't need any plugins. It works. You can use, a, you can use Google Chrome. Um, and you can have multiple people working together. So we work to improve that interface. You can now do voice calls for free within the con within that same environment. Uh, wow. You work with forty five different file formats, so you're not encumbered by that. Thirty four, uh, thirty four fi file formats. Forty four. Wow. Um, and 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 you can also uh, you can also uh, bring in uh, run analysis away from your thin client. So we've got a cloud render as an example, um, and so you can switch wow. on the render and you can keep working. Uh, so pretty excited about those, and 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 there's a lot more. So this is just incredible. You know, you you're basically you're working in a three dimensional space. Anybody who's used CAD is familiar with that. Except you're doing it in a browser, and you have as many I think up to a million people working simultaneously on a single document. So you're seeing things that other people are doing in real time, just like you're working on a Google Doc. That's just uh, that's just incredible. Yeah, no, we I mean like we fully expect to be surprised by where people will take it. So pretty soon we'll be. Uh, launching something we call open projects, you know, hard problems that we're really throwing out to the world uh, and interested to see, you know, where people will, will take those. So uh, we think oh, there's wow. a lot of value in uh, you know, bringing in people with different skill sets. I mean, it all sounds amazing. What's, but, but what's the end game here? What's the ultimate goal 
for Sunglass IO? Are you working toward a system for engineering, visualization, simulation, animation, hacker slash maker people, or something else altogether? Sure. So, uh, so we call ourselves Sunglass because uh, you know we think a sunglass is a way of looking at the world, and we need a, a multiple a multiplicities of perspectives. Um, so, so really, you know, I think uh, the days of saying if you're a hobbyist, turn left; if you're a senior designer, turn right. Uh, is, is both archaic and borderline insulting because uh, I mean just just look around at what what's being made um, and so uh, if anything we want to bring be a bridge and bring those together uh, we think uh, it's it's exciting if you can play with any 3D model in any format you can simulate right there in the same environment and you can take those results and do something with it so uh, you know it's it's bringing these different pieces of modeling analysis publishing prototyping together in a shared space uh, and making it really device agnostic, channel agnostic, that's that's exciting for us. Uh, yeah, that is exciting. So right now, this very second, how are people using sunglass.io and where does it fit best in the overall design and engineering process? Sure. So it's it's, it's designed, um, so sunglass is visualized for, for being helpful at the early stage of design. Uh, when you really don't need six decimal uh, of accuracy, you want quick feedback on your on your work. Uh, to begin with, a lot of people are using Sunglass to, uh, everyone who's been a supporter of our beta program is using Sunglass to uh, either you know, share their work because it, they now have mobility, they can access it on the go, uh, or to run collaborative sessions with other people. Uh, to begin with, uh, you know, people are, are seeing this as a collaboration platform. Um, and, uh, and and they're discovering new features as they're added. Now, you guys, so, but right now you're not doing any modeling. As far as I know, you're not doing any mechanical assembly in terms of uh, assembly relationships, hinges, gears, cams, all that kind of stuff. And it's also completely browser-based. It's running in WebGL, um, and you can render all the 3D data without a plugin, which is really cool. Um, but uh, how do you explain... How would you talk about the long-term viability of this as a tool? Do you see it becoming a modeling and assembly and, you know, all that stuff platform? Or, you know, how do you see this evolving? So, so, so really the question starts with the pain points we see around us. We, we want to be the GitHub of 3D. Uh, if you, so in, for GitHub in computer science, you're programming in different developer environments. And GitHub, you know, manages interoperability seamlessly. Uh, we think that's very mm. exciting, uh, and oh, yeah. we see the opportunity to do that in 3D. After all, right now, two in three designers are rebuilding the same model format to format, and that's that's not design, that's a distraction from design. File exchange mm. is a distraction from design. Um, so oh, yeah. uh, mm. so today we're announcing uh, you know, uh, integration to, to start with with simple plugins into SolidWorks, Rhino, SketchUp, and processing, uh, and also making it super easy to like directly bring in files from your Dropbox, Box, Gmail, or your desktop. Um, and so uh, people will continue to model in those environments. Um, and really what we're going to focus on is we're going to work on streaming, working with you know, files of massively large files that typically slow down your computer. A version control, being able to seamlessly go back and forth and say, hey, that version on Sunday at 3 p.m., let's go to that one. Uh, we think that's that's exciting. Uh, there's also mm -hmm. an application layer, and so uh, across those different spaces, modeling, rendering, analysis, prototyping, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're thrilled that, uh, you know, we're coming across fantastic ideas that are being built as apps on the Sunglass platform, um, and, so, and so they will launch and be uh, offered on a pay-per-use basis in the next several months. So very complementary to uh, the tools that already exist. Uh, you know, we like them. So this has taken a model direct from, say, like SolidWorks, direct from that interface into Sunglass I.O. Yeah, yeah. And in, in fact, the, our, the idea of modeling is changing. You know, there's some great 3D reconstruction uh, tools, for example. They're great uh, you know, repositories out there. Um, and so uh, the, people, people will really pick what their starting point is. Uh, and if they choose to bring in uh, from existing modeling tools, that, that's something we want to support. So what you're describing, it's sort of like a, a PDM system. Maybe it's not managing all the files, but you're, you're doing version control. Uh, but it's a lot more visual. Uh, big companies like Autodesk and Dassault are already 
developing and have web-based PDM systems. Yeah. Uh, so they're kind of there to an extent, but not so, like you guys. Yeah, uh, no, we're, we, we like hard, so we're built on hard engineering problems. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's one thing to do it at a, you know, to just, to just like see a bunch of files as, as folders. It's another thing if you can go deeper. So we can do the difference between two 3D models. Um, and because of that, we'd let you sort of seamlessly you know, move between very, between different versions as the file evolves um, so that you are, you know, you can just focus on doing what you do best. Um, and so, uh, you know, th- those are, those are like, those are very hard, non-trivial problems to solve. That's why those solutions don't exist right now. Um, and so uh, it, it would go way beyond uh, a simple management, uh, a, a management system, which is right. complex in itself, but I mean, do you think that that's a do you think that that's a, a permanent state of being? I mean, there are lots of smaller startups that are kind of paving the way for this kind of innovation. But uh, you know, do you think that that will continue to be true into the future? Will you always be one step ahead, or or are the big guys going to catch up to you? Well, even amongst the big guys, I think there's a lot of diversity. There are some companies that clearly get it and they're investing in the right spaces, uh, and there are others that that. That, that aren't as yet, uh, but but I, I do think so. I think I think startups will be uh, uh, will will be uh, you know are are designed to be more experimental spaces, and so I've got. To, I'm sorry, I have to ask who who are the big players that get it in your opinion? Um, I I I, I, I mean I think uh, you know like Autodesk, Autodesk has AutoCAD WS. I think that's uh, you know that's an interesting step. Uh, they're 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 you know they're working with. Singularity University, for example, so they're uh, working with you know smart people who are going to challenge the status quo, and uh, I think that's uh, that that's good. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I have to agree on that. <laughs> also, are you uh, are we going to be shifting uh, geometry, creating uh, functional products with our hands in the near future? I want to find out what you think about this because you see like things like the the connect fusion, uh, and then you and then what you guys are doing. You think of putting those two together, and uh, suddenly you have a, a way of do a way to do generative uh, design with hands-free interaction. So, uh, do you think that's the future of design and engineering? Uh, uh, absolutely. In fact, we've got uh, at least two top universities where uh, you know they're gesture-based apps that are being built for Sunlas, and I don't expect them to be amongst the first to be released, but. Uh, uh, there, there will be interesting stuff coming up. Uh, you know, we think um, I mean, there's so many exciting products like you know, this coming out. Uh, like you know, Leap Motion is is cool. Um, I and and so yeah, I I, I think uh, you know there's the Techstars Connect uh, class in Seattle. There are a lot of interesting ideas that are going to come out. Um, and we're excited about them. We want to partner with them. So, so far we've been talking about the big picture here and I'm, I mean, it is really exciting stuff. I have to, I mean, this is, this is fantastic, but, uh, I, you know, I guess as I listen to this, I just get, I just get all excited about what could I actually do yeah. with sunglass and, and frankly, I'm not sure. Can you tell me like, what could I do with sunglass today? What's something that I could get out there and do with it? Sure. Um, so, so right now, yeah. So, so, so right now, you can, you know, bring in your model from in any file format, um, and you can have a collaborative session with anybody else. Anybody. Okay. What What does that mean? You have a collaborative session. What does that mean? What are you doing sure. in this collaborative? So, session? so you can use, for example, something called the broadcast mode, um, and you can take over the other person's screen and guide them through specific parts of the model, um, and both of you can be making changes, and then at the end of the broadcast mode. Uh, you can decide, they can decide whether to keep your version or to keep their version. And what, what kind of changes are you making? You're just taking components and moving them around? Is that about the extent of it at this so, point? So, or what so, else can you do? So to begin with, so to begin with we've, got, uh, we've got simpler transformations. Uh, you know, you can, you, you can, you can change uh, the dimensions, you can move, you can rotate. Um, and that will keep getting broader. It'll keep getting a, a lot uh, broader. Uh, but just just to give you an example of sort of something we're working on, and you'll see a little bit of this um, you know, on on uh, so, uh, on Thursday, um, we, we we're working on an, an an architecture that supports sort of massively complex projects, um, and so you'll be able to uh, really enable different people to work on different pieces uh, of a complex project. 
See, that's actually really wow. exciting. You could open a file that would that would crash your computer with smoke coming out the sides of it. You can open that up in Sunglass, let the Amazon servers deal with it, or whoever. Is that what you're using? Are you using what what server platform are you guys? Yeah. Using? So we're um, so yeah. So we're so we're um, yeah. So so we work with Amazon right now, um, and and increasingly we'll be uh, you know we they they create opportunities to uh, to even use supercomputing uh, capabilities and uh, um, you know. And, and and so we'll use the the, the fastest resource um, uh, we can make available. Um, so so really the difference is sort of as you run a sunglass app. Um, so let's say take rendering. You know instead of paying fifteen hundred dollars, getting it on your desktop, and then it slows your desktop. Uh, now you'll be able to either from through a plugin from you. Like in the future, either through a plugin in in your desktop in your regular environment or through the sunglass browser environment. You can get a render for seventy-five bucks a month, and you're also paying for compute cycles. So you're also paying for wow. uh, executions that are done away from your thin client. Instead of the CPU burning a hole in my desk, I can I can just uh, <laughs> offload that. It's amazing. Yeah, sounds sounds nice. So I'm also wondering, with so many kids uh, getting their hands dirty with making things these days and becoming more interested in design and engineering, how is Sunglass approaching the younger generations? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and the younger generations are gonna, uh, so you know, that, that, that's where new ideas will, will, will come from. Um, so we're, um, so we're, so, so to start with, we're, you know, we're working with a number of universities. We're, we're gonna be in MIT's curriculum, for example. Uh, we're doing these fun projects where students from multiple schools collaborate and build together. Uh, and we wanna see what, what comes out of that. Um, we, we're gonna, um, uh, 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 you know, like I think they're they're great high school programs. Like you know, Dean Kamen's first is an example. Um, so so uh, you know, we're always looking for ways to uh, to be involved in these programs. I mean, take Scratch for example from the MIT Media Lab. The average age of a user is fourteen, I think. Um, you know, visual mm-hmm. programming. So Scratch three D is launching on Sunglass, um, and and. Uh, as oh, these wow. tools come out, uh, you know, they, 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 a big chunk of the user group will be very young. Wow. wow. Very, very cool, Nitin. Uh, having you on this show has been even better than that time Adam tied 10 Saturn missile batteries to his chest and ran through the zoo screaming like an angry zebra. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, Josh, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about this. And yeah, uh, yeah. for heaven's sake, I mean, what... Uh, like sending an e-drawings uh-huh. file or something just seems that just seems like like last week's news. I am I am totally using sunglass.io to share these models with my clients from now on. Totally and no web browser plugin needed at all. It's it's not been done Unbelievable. before. First time. So freaking awesome. Changing changing the way we do business people. Oh yeah. Yeah. EVD listeners, if you would like to send Saturn missile batteries to EVD HQ, please address them to Adam. And if you would like to send lots of <laughs> tape to EVD, please address that to me as well. Yep, he'll need it. <laughs> send us your comments, call us names, and let us know how you really feel. Head over to engineerversusdesigner.com and uh, write on our wall at Facebook for everybody to see. Oh, yes, please do. Also, be sure to like us, plus one us, tweet us, or whatever else us, because makes our parents call and ask us what we're doing with our lives. <laughs> this show is edited by Simon Martin. <laughs> our theme music is by Ross Hart. We'll see you next week. And remember, you can hold your breath till you turn red, but the real contest begins when you can take a punch to the solar plexus and not pass out. I, wait, can you say that again? I'm writing that down. <laughs> Do you take my lemonade? Look out. Engineer vs. Designer is brought to you by Mojo 3D Printer, a world-class professional 3D printer for only $185 a month. To find out how you can give your big idea a little mojo, visit mojo3dprinting.com. A production of EBD Media.